Welcome to The Culture Hack. I'm down on site at ZST Technologies. They're a local company and they're doing some crazy stuff with decarbonizing concrete. So you're gonna wanna watch this. ZS2 Technologies. Welcome to The Culture Hack. I am super excited to be on site here in Calgary at ZS2 with three co-founders of ZS2. We have Kristen Davis, Scott Jenkins, and Doug Brown with me here today. Thanks so much for inviting me down. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, go check it out. We talked about how they came up with this crazy idea. We got a shop tour. We got to see what was going on. And now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the cool features and science behind it and kind of what's next for the future. So. Um, uh, Kristen, what's what's next for you guys? What's what's top of mind as we go into 2025? Uh, taking over the world for sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. right. Absolutely. Looking at expanding over into Eastern Canada, down to the U.S. to serve our markets. Um, we're looking at expanding our team um, and just kind of growing with our business. Okay, gotcha. A lot of growth. That's fantastic. So. Um, Doug, you're the you're the science guy. You've got the PhD. You know, if people are watching this and kind of intrigued, but want to know a little bit about the features and why this is such a big idea, what 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 do you want to tell them? Yeah. So um, first of all, you know, obviously we need to decarbonize. Uh, you know, we've seen some crazy storms even just last night, uh, and there are some things we can move away from, and cement is certainly not one of them. Uh, and we need to, frankly, use more of it to build buildings that are more resilient, um, that can survive these types of events. We can't afford to rebuild communities over and over again. Uh, and so looking at using more of this really carbon intensive product while we're decarbonizing, uh, we have to do it better and we have to be smarter about it. Um, I became aware of magnesium cement about 10 years ago, uh, and it really struck me as an opportunity. It's a cement that is quite old, it's actually used in some of the construction of some of our ancient structures, like Great Wall of China, for instance. Um, but it's not used really extensively now because of two reasons. One, limited geographic availability of this raw material. And number two, it's got a complex chemistry. Uh, it is a material that is a saltwater cement. And salt, if you live in a northern climate like we do here, you can see what it does to a lot of the materials that we have. Uh, and so we see this as an opportunity. And so that was part of our first patent was really addressing that we could produce these materials in a stable way from broadly abundant waste streams. And so for the first time, we think we can scale up this product uh, and produce it at a larger scale. And you might think, well, um, that's great. So we're gonna produce this lower carbon footprint cement, but does it have uh, equivalent properties? And in some, in some aspects, it's actually a better cement. It's lighter, uh, it has a higher fire rating because it has a lot more water in the final product and that's usually what gives you your fire rating. Uh, so there are a lot of values around even, even wanting to use this. Um, it was just really that resource constraint that I think for the first time, people are starting to open their eyes and be like, oh my God, we can, we can do this. Um, and it's a huge opportunity, we think. Interesting. So it's more fire resistant, it's lighter, and you're actually getting the salt water from waste material. Yes. So, you know, Scott, like why why wouldn't the industry grab a hold of this and, and run with it? Yeah, I think, uh, and you know, Doug just sort of encapsulated and Adam, you know, just the way you sort of summarized uh, Doug's conversation there. Um, it It's quite simple when we discuss it, but it really took a couple pieces coming together in a unique way. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge and why the industry, you know, we are a building product for structural building envelopes, now non-structural, now interior firewalls. Um, but this is an industry, the construction industry, that requires a lot of third-party testing, certification, proof points. Um, so that's a, that's a long road. Uh, for us and takes a lot of investment. Mm -hmm. We've now made that investment and I think that's why we're seeing all the success, especially in these recent large project wins in the United States. You know, one, you know, just give you a quick example of the, you know, we've just secured where we're kind of the building envelopes for the largest Habitat for Humanity project in California history. Mm -hmm. But it's because of the fire resistance, but it's also because we're prefab offsite construction and so we're reducing on-site labor. 
So it's bringing that together. But mm -hmm. uh, it is unique materials. People are very interested in them now. And now we have the proof points, the projects, the certification, the third party lab testing. Uh, but it's it's been a big effort to get to this point. There's no doubt. Okay, well, that's that sounds amazing. So you put all this investment in up front. You get the the testing done. And you probably have to send material away to get it tested. And that's right. Right. They probably come back. So the engineering the engineer in me is like all excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Like, and, and I, you know, for the folks in the episode, I asked Adam. Adam's an aerospace engineer, as mm -hmm. I just learned yeah. uh, on episode one uh, when I asked you that question. Um, the engineering and technical, like it's not easy because we also get asked, well, why hasn't someone else thought of this? It, mm -hmm. it, it's not easy. It took a lot of smart folks, obviously, uh, Doug with his PhD in chemistry and really just a passion for decarbonizing, you know, one of the, the world's most consumed material, yeah. you know, cement and concrete. Um, but it is, there's a lot of technical know-how, uh, but now we've proven it and it works. I love that. So uh, for people here in Calgary, are there any buildings in Calgary here or projects that uh, they could see? Yeah, yeah we have uh, one of our biggest projects actually in just the south of Calgary, so off the Cloud Trail in uh, Shaughnessy, mm -hmm. the Trico Shaughnessy Station. We did a big seven-story multi, uh, multi-use residential and commercial. We did the cladding for the exterior, so we were able to help them when um, you know, supply chain was broken and they were still trying to get their project in the ground. We uh, had the inventory here in Calgary, so we were able to win that project over and, and complete it on time. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. That's, yeah. that's, you know, a phrase you don't hear too often. Right? Yes. Yes. For sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. On time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, as we look, uh, you know, into the future, you talked about going down to the States, you talked about expanding uh, in Canada. Um, are there lots of projects in Calgary specifically coming up in the hometown here? So for us, uh, actually, maybe I'll speak more broadly, just Southern Alberta, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, we do a wide range of projects, whether it's residential, commercial, industrial, agriculture, uh, just outside Lethbridge right now, we have mm -hmm. a large agricultural facility, uh, almost complete going up, uh, very short lead time. So they'll have it, uh, completed the building envelope so they can finish the interior as the weather begins to change here. Mm -hmm. um, we just recently completed a golf course clubhouse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some residential projects we've just secured. And of course, Kristen mentioned the seven story building, Trico. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I can say this, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty public. Uh, we just participated in building out the very first Krispy Kreme in Edmonton, Alberta. They're wow. coming back to yeah. Canada. Okay. So maybe I'll excite some listeners. They were here, they left, they're coming back. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. like say no more, yeah. say no more. Well, that's that's pretty cool. And it, you know, you're prefabbing them here and setting the concrete in temperature controlled environments. So you don't have to worry about the winter or the summer or the humidity or things of that nature. Is that, is that true? Yeah. and. Um, one of the very powerful things about magnesium cement that I kind of touched on was it's lighter. Mm -hmm. And so typically precast cement panels can serve as very small regions because you'll see two of them going down the road like this, sort of optimistically, or a single one on a truck. Right. And that truck's struggling because you've maxed out the weight. We can actually flat pack buildings. We max out on volume. And so we're able to service customers all over North America, even overseas now. Um, with a centralized manufacturing facility. And so, yeah, there's a huge reduction in, in even emissions associated with the, the transportation of these goods. Wow. Yeah. So the cascading effects there are quite, mm -hmm. quite vast. I feel like if people are watching on here that know about construction or are doing projects, you, you could probably follow that thread a little further than, uh, than I can, but that's, that's pretty exciting. So uh, just to close this off here, um, you know, we're talking about kind of the culture of your team and the, you know, the team you have here. Um, what do you see for the future uh, with your team in terms of just getting the best people and keeping them excited about ZS2 and all that kind of thing? Yeah, I think one of the more compelling reasons why people come to ZS2 is that, you know, we're a startup and we're doing something different and uh, very impactful in a, in a, a big 
hard to change industry. So it's exciting, right? To be a part of the change that we want to see in the world, not to quote Mahatma Gandhi, but it's mm. a great quote. And I think about it all the time when I think about the impact that uh, we're, we're creating. Um, so I think that we'll continue to be able to recruit talented individuals to join our team and join our effort. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Okay. Well, I'm super excited to see what you guys do next. And if I'm driving on McLeod Trail and I see a ZS2 stamp, I'll know it's you guys, right? Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for having thank me you. here. Thank you. And uh, if people do want to know more about what it is you guys do, uh, where should they where should they go? Yeah, head to our website, zs2technologies.com. So that's ZS, the number two. Uh, all of our contact information, our personal contact information is there. And, uh, you know, or come see us. We're here in Calgary. Uh, we have teams now in uh, Toronto throughout the US who are tech partner network. Uh, just reach out. We'd love to show you what we're doing. See you next time. Hope you're happy.